Boys, welcome back to the channel. And girls, remind you, check out vbeltsun.com. Get a new hat. I have a Napa hat on. We're trying to make something happen with that. But most of the time, V Belt and Sun hat. Those of you guys that have been hitting the subscribe button, thank you very much. We saw a great growth since the last time I mentioned to you guys. Hit the subscribe button. Uh, analytics say that we are doing better. But today, we are going to be installing the new engine in the grandma's truck. And this one fires up, runs good, and we had to work out a couple other kinks. But hope you guys enjoy this video. Stick tuned to the end. I have, you'll be seeing some sneak peeks of what grandma's truck is going to turn into. And I am excited about it. Enjoy the video. Fresh morning. Rockstar down. Healthy energy kick. So I can put this bad boy in the truck. It's going to be kind of a little bit of a feat putting it in there with the trans sitting there. But I, I got a plan. We'll see if this works. Maybe with some luck we might fire this thing up today. Kind of doubt it. We got a couple extra things we need to do. Well, I surprised myself with this one here. Caught it stabbed. I checked the time from when I filmed that first clip to this one now. It's 20 minutes. Transmission stabbed to the engine. I gotta put the motor mounts in, but that I thought was gonna be very difficult, but maybe we got lucky. But she's good to go. Let's put the engine mounts on. You guys are ready for it? Ta-da! Now everybody say pray that this engine does good. <laughs> I'll say it fits in there a lot nicer than this one did. Just I think because the valve cover obviously is... Plus it's got that line that goes goofy at the back. This one didn't fit and pull out quite as easy as this one did. There's all kinds of room for activities. Right now there is anyway. It looks like we have a little bit of an old exhaust leak right there. In my wand. Or beat that engine to death with club. Well everybody, I didn't film any of it. It was more of a personal battle and I just wanted to conquer it. And I didn't need the peer pressure of you guys watching the whole time. Even though I can decide what I edit out or keep. So, as of right now, we made a mess. I can't find two of the starter bolts. And they got to be the long ones because it's got an adapter thing on it. But just for you guys, we're just going to send her. Notice how it's already smoky in here. for a couple minutes keep checking for leaks big old death trap right in the front oh well well 
Well, it's oil change time for the dually. I got some antifreeze. Uh, we got some stuff that you guys can't see that right there. Blocked it out of your vision. Oh, shit. So I accidentally, when I bought the, uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? That's the one I want right there. The power's out right now. Somebody ran into a telephone pole down the street. But when I got the gauges for this, um, ordered the white ones and I ordered the fuel pressure is only 30 PSI. The P pump needs more than 30. I didn't realize that at the time. So I need to swap that one out. But I found this whole set on Craigslist. I offered the guy 200 bucks for the whole lot. It's like some 300 bucks worth of stuff. It's for a 12 valve. It's got the tap and die or tap and drill bit and stuff. It's got the fuses. And then it's even got, where did it go? There's like a the banjo thing for hooking up to the fuel pressure. Oh, there it is. So saving 100 bucks there. We got the right gauge, but it kind of sucks because it is um, black. I might swap them all out, but I'll put the rest of this stuff on um, Cowboy, the other second gen. So I'm going to swap these out. I might just swap them all out. Most of them, two of them, they just unplug, but the other one is actually wired up uh, inside the gauge. It's not just a plug. See, it's just a plug in. I'm hoping that that will, uh, I could just swap her. Fairly, went, fairly simple swap there, if I could talk. Just got a black one up there, which is fine. You know, we'll make that work, no big deal. This one's actually the one that still is wired in, so I'd have to cut those. That's only one that I'd change because uh, it's got a higher boost, but I'm not gonna be seeing over 60 PSI for a while. So let's look the battery up. I had it charging last night. And we'll see if that new gauge works if I have to swap out. I don't think I've swapped out the um, the sensor. Hopefully not. Should be 55. Whoa, holy hell. <laughs> Let's turn that down. The... Uh, I have the fast down here. It's got a 55 spring on it. But up top here, I have an adjustable, because that's, basically the pressure is gonna be the same no matter what. It's just restricting the outflow, which is gonna build it up more. So that's kind of what uh, the fast does with a bigger spring. And so I got this little guy right here. I'm gonna back that off. That was just an expensive experiment and I'm running with it. All right, to elaborate on what I was talking about, this one's got an adjustment on the backside. See her there? I uh, was just talking to Roland. He said this one's not going to take it down that far. And for daily driving, yeah, 90 is way too much. This valve wasn't ever on that engine because he says you'll burn up a pump by having too much on there for daily driving unless it's a hot rod. So I bought this one, and I bought this one at the same time. This one's just your stock replacement, so I'm going to throw it on there and see what pressure we're at. If I have to, I will take down the pressure via mechanical spring on the pump, which was 25 before uh, I got my sensors right there. So we'll see what this one changes or two. Okay, to further explain this, that is the return line right there. So you wanna have a check bolt in that so that when you shut off the fuel pump, it holds pressure from back draining. The pump itself is gonna hold pressure on its own end from going back into the tank. And this holds it on the back half so that you don't have a dry pump when you start it up. So if you're hard starting, that uh, check ball that I just swapped out, that could be the case. Come on, baby. Don't be something intense. Oof. It, the spring's supposed to be a 55 that I bought from Faz. It's running a 70. Once the dang grid heat turns off, we'll actually know what's going on. I'm going to take that spring out of it. Put the old one back in. I'm not getting accurate reading until that thing has bled the air out of it. So, which kind of needs to start the truck. But the battery... Since the power went out last night, it sat on the battery charger all night, not doing anything. So 
I'm going to start putting the stuff back together. Somebody wanted me to talk about more of what I've been doing on here. Uh, plain and simple, um, like I said yesterday when I was out here, I just wanted to get this all back together. A lot of things lined up pretty decent. This is a 24-valve manifold on here. It's not a 12-valve one, which means it's got circle ports versus like a squarish thing. But, you know, it'll work. It's going to do the job for now. And it worked out good because the heater core lines... It had a little post right there for hooking them up. Just tried to clean stuff up over here. I couldn't put the 24 valve one on here. It hit back here. So I didn't put that on there, I was going to. But opted out of that. And uh, everything else was just pretty much plug and play from what it was before. But you heard it running last night. I'll get the battery charged up. But for right now, I'm going to uh, go ahead and start putting all the front stuff back on it. And I'm hearing somebody out here. Oh yeah, and I gotta change the dang oil on this truck. Guess I better get that started. Ah, the joys of the fourth gen. Bull crap. Oh, it's leaking. Oh, don't do it. Oh, shit. Man down. At least we got it. Oh, man, it's really leaking. What the hell happened? <laughs> At least we got it out of the truck before it started the grenade. <laughs> Damn it. I was like, that worked out good. Except for the bag got hot and she gone. But yeah normally i just take the intake out because it's way easier on a second gen even a third gen they're really easy to get to you just take the air box off and boom right there so that ain't the case there but at least i got it out of there without making a mess of the truck that's the main thing screw the driveway well guys yet again i forgot to film it but this is the return to the pump or return to the tank excuse me uh, you take the hose off that fitting and then behind this fitting that goes into the housing, there is this spring. This spring right here is supposed to be a 55 spring. In it is a stock spring. This is for a VP44. So it was like, I think it was like a 15 PSI, 17, 18, somewhere in there, like a stock fast pressure. But for the P-pump, I need a little bit more. So I stretched that spring and got it up to 25 with the... Uh, P pump swap 24 valve. I don't know, that wasn't high enough, so I got this little guy, it was like 20 bucks, it was stupid. But I figured what the heck, I'm just gonna get the right thing, get it done with. So I put the stock one in that I had stretched, and now it's at about 45 PSI, which is ideal, I kinda like it right there. Don't know what the, what the deal is, I put that check ball in there, that it's literally the same one that was on the, uh, it was the same model one that I had on the uh, P-pump on the 24 valve. But for some reason, I don't know, this pump's, I don't know, making more whatever. So I'm going to fire it up real quick just to, because I can. For anybody that's going to question the fact that Yes, we were running a little bit more pressure than uh, the old pump required on the P-pump thing. It's talking to Roland, and for the amount that I actually drove this truck, I probably only have three, two, three miles worth of uh, driving on it. So maybe, it's probably not even that, maybe two. So in that time frame, it shouldn't hurt the pump by having the pressure up that high. And most of that time, I was 100% throttling it up. Okay guys, I'm gonna jump in and talk a little bit while I'm just using some pliers. Talk about the engine, talk about the old engine. I did not just swap engines just for views. It was not for fun or any of that stuff. Doing these videos is fun, but I'm not trying to go out of my way and ruin a perfectly good engine in order to make content and or swap engines for content. I don't need to do that. It's a big waste of time doing what I'm doing, even though I need to do it because I bought a failed engine. But just everything I've gone into this thing, it was the best route for the time being because if I were to spend the money on a big, expensive, built engine, that would have been nice. But the wait time to get one of these engines built and delivered and deal with shipping and all this stuff and trying to get people to call back, it just, wasn't really suited for what I was looking for because I would like to have a good running truck at the end of the day and not wait a year for an engine 
and getting a good running engine that I've this one worked out perfect because I've been hearing this thing run for literally years in my cousin's truck before he met up with a tree uh, this just worked out perfect and sure the engine you know it's just a 12 valve it, it's not nowhere near as mean as the p-pump 24 valve I can tell you that but uh, I'll come back to you guys at the end of the video with a little bit of elaboration and some plans that I have dealing with uh, well not dealing with but just what's next for this engine and what's next for the truck because you guys will see undoubtedly a little bit of the teasers that I'm going to offer you before this video ends but uh, we're gonna go back to real time now enjoy me talking to a uh, camera in front of a truck and this stuff like this nice radiator eBay literally the first thing that pops up when you type it in like 200 bucks Tight fit. Just need to add water to it. I need to flush this. No, like a 12 valve. I don't know what the deal is, why that other spring was, I don't know. Yeah, I gotta investigate that. If that was doing that on a common rail, I'd worry about injectors, but wait to start lights flashing. But we got 45 PSI fuel pressure and that's right where we want it. I doubt we'll build any boost sitting here idle. Let's see here. I moved it. Yeah, Pyrometer's working, tack's working. I bumped up the idle just a little bit. And voltage is working. Yeah, as long as the oil pressure's working. Showing good over there. Desperately need to find those starter bolts. Don't know how I lost two of them. Because I throw everything per project. Like, this is obviously a messed up pile I've gone through it, but that's all the stuff taking the engine out of Tommy's truck, which is this engine here. And all the stuff that came off of the 24 valve, there's a couple extra things, like these are intake horn. This is for the uh, holding up the heater core lines. I don't know how I robbed a different... Uh, harmonic balancer bolt off something else but yeah that's that that but it's not here i don't know where the starter bolts went no idea easy she obviously needs a bath but she's had surgery a couple times <laughs> you guys i <laughs> found the starter bolts there they are <laughs> i was like what the heck i already got the uh exhaust bolts in but there's the two damn starter bolts right there. Like I said, they're longer ones for uh, the adapter plate because it's got a stupid flywheel on it that's got, it needs a spacer. I oh, can't even see it. But anyway, I'm gonna put those in there because gosh, damn it. <laughs> All right, everything's accounted for because uh, none of that stuff I need, except for that one bolt. There's always one bolt. Looks like something I would've used for one of these locations. Oh, well, we don't need it. Yes. Well, guys, I did have the engine flipped upside down, so all the oil that was in it went out. The valve covers dripped all over everything. When I flipped it back over, it leaked off the top. So that's what all that stuff is. So I'm going to have a little bit of that for a little while. Shouldn't have any leaks, but you never know. Filled the water up gonna flush it out because it got a little rusty because all I had in it was water before uh, so flush that out and then put some antifreeze in there because it's freaking winter time right oh mama where's my hat I know I got messy hair engine uh, some routing on some stuff 
think we'll be good to go as far as that. So it's been a while, while coming. Finally here, this thing fire up and sound good. And if you guys can see Tommy's truck over there, everybody comment below say thank you, Tommy, for parting ways with his engine. Oh, man. It sounds better than this truck. Like I said last night that there was a leak and I thought it was a tappet cover gasket. And that's what this guy is. This is a brand new one. It's the same ones out of a kit that I used for grandma's engine, but it was wiggling around on the back side of the tappet cover because that is your seal right there. And then this is the Cummins one. See how much thicker it is? This thing was just walking back and forth in there. Felt pretty tight when I put it on there. I don't know if when it just got exposed to the oil, it shriveled up. So um, yeah, I'm a little leery about all the other gaskets I put in there. So I'll put the actual genuine Cummins one in there. You can see you got to pull the pump to do that. But since I swapped this thing over to a fast, it doesn't have any of the factory fuel filter or any of those hard lines up in there. So it was quite a bit easier to pull, but it still, still kind of sucked. I just wanted to throw that in just so you guys know what the hell happened because there's most definitely a pretty severe oil leak. It could have been worse. It could have been knocking like that last engine when I fired it up. That knock started so slight, but it was there. And it got louder, and it got louder, and everything I did to it, it got louder. That old P-Pump 24 valve, now it might have been an awesome sounding ripper, quick revving son of a gun, but dang, it had a knock, boys. And I didn't pull it out of there just to pull it out and put a 12 valve in. I will remind you, this truck was already a 12 valve. So I'm just naturally putting the truck back to its original state in which I'm pretty happy about. But the P-Pump 24 valve, I'm definitely interested to go back and investigate that later on. I think that is, with a good long block, it's going to be sweet. Stop asking to buy my parts. I'll find a new home on a different truck for pretty much everything I have. But with Grandma's truck, I really wanted to make a truck that was somewhat unique. I didn't want just a, another green truck. Straight rebuild, re-overhaul looking stock i wanted it to stand out and be like dang look at that truck go down the road and then roll a bunch of coal because that's cool but that brings me to a point i wanted to make it this point in a video i did the other day but it just didn't it didn't really fit but when i'm making these videos it's second these videos no offense but it i'm gonna do this stuff whether i film it or not and all the stuff i'm doing is it's my kind of stuff. I'm not trying to do it necessarily for views. I do appreciate you guys watching these videos. It's awesome. Keep it up. Subscribe. Like the video. Share it. All that stuff. But first and foremost, I'm doing this stuff to fulfill the stuff that I said I'm going to do. That's how I enter pretty much every day in my life is if I said I'm going to do that, if time allows, um, I'm going to go do it. I said I was going to rebuild my grandma's truck. It's not quite done yet, but I am freaking trying to get this truck done. So, those of you guys out there, I've met tons of people that have been all talk. I mean, it's like the percentage is sad, but it's, it's pretty low for the people that actually fulfill that, you know? And uh, I hate seeing comments, people asking for free stuff. People, if you're trying to buy stuff, that's, you know, that's fine, but I'm, that's not, I'm not selling this stuff. Again, I'll, I'll find a home for all these other parts. But go out. If you got time to talk about it, you got time to go work about it go out there and make it happen if you want to shop if you want any of that stuff uh it just you gotta put the time in that's all i can say if you fail get back up and try again this truck has been killing me this will be grandma's engine failed took it out i put a six thousand dollar p-pump swap 24 valve that's after it did injectors and bought some other stupid crap for it it failed on me I'm going to fix that engine and make it right and figure out what's wrong. But then we tried grandma's old engine. Failed. We tried uh, what we thought was a good industrial 12 out. It failed. And now we got Tommy's engine. It's out of a good running truck. So this one should do good. We've done what we could do in the meantime to uh, prolong it, you know, its life. But the whole point is I haven't quit. And I got projects on top of projects that I do off camera. This truck... I really want to see it get done. And if you guys make it this far in these videos, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Uh, blew the whole take with one slurred word. Just kidding. We'll let it slide. But like this video. Subscribe to the channel. 
share the videos. I really appreciate it. Check out vbeltandsun.com. And if you guys are going to talk to me about doing something, do it. You'll figure out a way to do it. If you need a little guidance, I talk to tons of you guys on Instagram or emails trying to help you out with stuff. And most of the time, all I really ask for in return is a simple thank you. Just to try to help my brother or sister or whoever, what you know, whatever you are. If you need help with something, there's all kinds of people out there. And but hopefully, sometimes before you message me on a you know a common question, check my videos because I try to answer them in other videos in a featured video. But this video is long enough. Hope you enjoyed. See you.